After decades of instability, Afghanistan is finally beginning to establish a real economy and infrastructure of its own. For much of the past 50 years, Afghanistan did not have paved roads, electricity, irrigation for farming, or industries. But the government is now focused on mega projects that can positively impact the lives of Afghans while creating jobs. Afghanistan's main problem is unemployment and low wages, even though goods are available. Let's look at some of the top Afghan mega projects giving hope for the future. For most of the 20th century, Afghanistan has been in turmoil. The Cold War power struggle between the Soviet Union and the West turned Afghanistan into a battlefield. Foreign interventions and infighting led to never-ending conflict, sanctions, and suffering for regular Afghans. Since 2001, the chaos has led to a swelling of the capital Kabul from 700,000 people to over 4 million as refugees fled there for safety. This put huge pressure on infrastructure. Before 1978, Afghanistan was poor but developing. It had a peaceful monarchy and was not as isolated. But in the 1980s, Kabul was heavily damaged by civil war. The Taliban rule later led to isolation. Warlords destroyed infrastructure. By 2001, the country was destroyed with no functioning government, infrastructure, or institutions. Since then, slow efforts have begun to rebuild Afghanistan. But progress is difficult with ongoing conflict and sanctions. Unemployment haunts Afghans today. But new mega projects finally offer real hope. The new Afghan government aims to complete major infrastructure projects to reduce poverty and create jobs. These projects focus on areas like housing, electricity, mining, agriculture, transportation, and telecommunications. Building national highways, railways, dams, canals, and cities will provide jobs immediately. But the real payoff will come later as these projects enable trade, industry, and better lives for Afghans. The projects will allow Afghanistan to leverage its strategic location to become a regional transit hub. Exporting minerals, copper, and agricultural products will generate state revenue. Building infrastructure and a skilled workforce can attract foreign investment down the road. While sanctions have hindered Afghanistan, the country is focused on self-reliance. Mega projects may allow Afghanistan to finally achieve its potential. Kabul was once a peaceful city with a population of around 500,000 in the 1960s. It was known for beautiful gardens and historic architecture blending Mughal and Western styles. But decades of civil war, Taliban rule, foreign invasions, and unrest swelled Kabul. Waves of rural Afghans fled there for safety and jobs. By 2001, Kabul's population exceeded 2 million. Infrastructure crumbled due to neglect and destruction. Decaying buildings, illegal settlements, traffic jams, and pollution plagued the capital. With the U.S. invasion, another 1.5 million displaced Afghans relocated to Kabul in just a few years. This overwhelmed the city, causing slums, water shortages, and unemployment. Efforts to expand Kabul ran into trouble. The first master plan created in 1965 planned for a population of 1 million by 2,000. As refugees flooded in, illegal housing clusters emerged. A new plan made in 1977 aimed for 2 million residents by 2000. But Kabul passed this figure by 1980, hitting 3 million by 2000. The 2001 Kabul Urban Reconstruction Project targeted 5 million people. However, growth was poorly controlled, with 60% living in informal settlements by 2005. Japan funded a Kabul Metropolitan Area Master Plan in 2008, envisioning a new city for 4.5 million. But its $15 billion budget seemed unrealistic given Afghanistan's challenges. With 1.5 million added residents after 2014, Kabul burst at the seams with 5 million people. Nearly 80% lacked piped water, and 68% lacked electricity. The time came for drastic action. The Desab City Development Authority was formed to plan a new capital. Kabul New City will span 40,000 hectares of land in Desab's district, with adjacent areas of Shikar Dara, Karabagh, Istalif, and Kalakan districts included. 
The site sits 20 kilometers north of Kabul city, wedged between Bagram Airfield, the Alishang River, and the Shomali Plains. Districts were chosen for space to grow and natural boundaries. The $5 billion first phase will provide housing, parks, hospitals, schools, offices, malls, and transit for 300,000 residents by 2030. Solar power, wastewater treatment, solid waste management, and a lake will support a sustainable, eco-friendly city. Tree-lined neighborhoods and commercial zones will have amenities absent in Kabul. A circular urban layout will improve transit and access. Connections to Kabul airport and the city center will blend new Kabul seamlessly into the capital region. The plan extends to 2040, expanding capacity to 1.5 million residents. Kabul New City will relieve overcrowding, freeing space to renovate Kabul's historic fabric. Better housing will raise living standards. Environmentally conscious development will prevent unregulated sprawl. The new city provides room for growth with modern amenities to create a prosperous community. With open spaces, transit, and economic options, Kabul New City offers Afghans the stability long denied them from conflict. It provides a blank slate for the nation to come together to build a hopeful future. Afghanistan's position between Iran, Central Asia, and the Indus Valley gives it natural transport advantages. But decades of war prevented infrastructure development. As part of the new Lapis Lazuli Trade Corridor, the Kaf Herat Railway is a key missing link. It connects Afghanistan's frontier city of Herat to Iran's eastern rail network at Kaf. Herat was historically part of Greater Khorasan, with rich Persian cultural ties. Trade thrived for millennia through the Herat Oasis. Reviving these ties has major economic benefits. Strategically, it provides Afghanistan with alternatives to Pakistan for trade. The 225 kilometers Kaf Herat line includes 140 kilometers across Western Afghanistan from the Iranian border to Herat. It crosses remote desert terrain and mountains up to 2,000 M in elevation. Building rail infrastructure presents engineering challenges. Tunnels and bridges are needed to traverse ridges and ravines. Sandy stretches risk-shifting dunes covering tracks. Flash flooding in wadis threatens washouts. The line must also withstand seasonal 40 degree C summer heat and 20 C winter cold. Rigorous maintenance will be required in Afghanistan's harsh environment. While challenging to construct, the railway promises massive benefits. Currently, Afghanistan depends on Pakistani ports like Gwadar and Karachi. But with Kaf Herat, goods can move via Chabahar port in Iran. Rail creates a high-capacity transit corridor to unlock Afghanistan's export potential. Herat connects to Afghanistan's Ring Road Highway Network. The rail allows Afghan goods to reach China, Europe, the Gulf, and Africa rapidly by joining Iran's 15,000 kilometers rail grid. Not only will the Kaf Herat line bolster Afghan trade, but revenue from transit fees and spin-off jobs will aid development. It offers vital alternatives for landlocked Afghanistan. Kaf Herat forms part of the Istanbul-Tehran-Islamabad freight corridor. Beyond Iran, it ties to Turkmenistan via a planned link to Mashhad. Tajik and Uzbek networks can also connect in the future. With win-win trade and cultural benefits, the railway can help integrate Afghanistan into the global economy after long isolation. For an economy shattered by war, connectivity is key to rebuilding. With careful operation through fragile security environments, the Kaf Herat line will boost Afghanistan and advance regional partnerships. Despite ample snow melt from mountains, water scarcity plagues northern Afghanistan. Rivers flow out of the country before farmland can benefit. Spring rainfall rushes away in flash floods. Climate change worsened droughts that ravaged crops. Rural poverty became entrenched without irrigation to support agriculture. Food insecurity rose as subsistence farms failed. Dwindling resources led ethnic groups to fight over access to land and water. Environmental stress fueled Afghanistan's instability over decades. To address this, the colossal Kush Tepa Canal project aims to spread water to where it is most needed. This man-made river starts at the AMU Darya near the Turkmenistan border.
Winding 285 kilometers, it flows west across the desert before turning north. Gravity alone powers the canal without pumping. A 12M wide channel directs water into tributary canals, branching over thousands of kilometers. Once finished, the mega project will irrigate 55,000 hectares of land and provide drinking water across several provinces. Laser leveled fields and drip irrigation will optimize yields. Bringing water security stands to revive the rural economy and stem migration out of the region. Thousands of farmers will gain renewed livelihoods by farming wheat, saffron, fruits, and nuts. Pasture land will support expanded livestock herds. Ripple effects from agriculture will lead to employment in processing plants, logistics, trade, and support industries. As food production rises, Afghanistan can reduce imports and potentially export surpluses. Kush Tepa's bounty will nourish the nation with diversity and nutrition. This mega canal holds the promise of prosperity and stability for generations to come. With ample water, communities can thrive, turning northern Afghanistan's fate around. The Kush Tepa project highlights how visionary infrastructure can transform a nation. After decades of being a war-torn nation, Afghanistan finally has a chance at stability through mega projects. Major infrastructure initiatives like Kabul New City, the Kaf Herat Railway, and the Kush Tepa Canal will improve lives and create jobs. Leveraging its location, Afghanistan can develop industries in mining, agriculture, and transit. Challenges like unemployment, poverty, and displacement may slowly heal. While the road ahead is still difficult, these mega projects offer the country hope for a better future. A politically stable and economically viable Afghanistan would benefit the entire region. Thanks for watching and don't forget to leave a comment below if you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe and check out our video on Turkey Drone Domination.